please ignore my blue nail beds. I uh, decided to raw dog <laughs> a hair dye job <laughs> four days out and I'm still not completely not Smurf colored. Stay tuned for when I start my journey as being the baddest Smurfette. But right now I just look a little dirty. Hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and A Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Ah, uh, I was about to start filming in that damn biracial girl song stuck in my head again. It's been like a week. Baby shoe girl, living in a rainbow world. And she needs to choose one side. <laughs> something, something, then it prove it, then it, then it let it go. Last week, or whenever I was here last time, I missed last week, did I? I don't even have an excuse. I'm, I don't, I don't even give excuses at this point. But last time I was here, we did a little uh, tier list. It was kind of fun, where we looked at all 50 plus videos I've done in this here series, and during which I did name the worst of the worst movies that I've discussed thus far, and ultimately which ones were so bad, but still worth watching. So if you haven't seen that video already, it'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies and a Beat playlist. A few weeks ago, I ended up falling down the disturbing movie rabbit hole on the internet with a term like a disturbing film as a genre. You can only imagine how far that goes. It can often mean like psychologically disturbing or situationally disturbing, taboo, oftentimes very gory. I ended up watching a bunch of Spooky Rice, a few of the videos that um, Mr. Gigi did on uh, disturbing films. I watched a few videos on the disturbing movie Iceberg and I did end up watching a few of them. Personally, I'm not big on the just like gross bodily fluid <laughs> hacker movies or just like the ones that are so desperately trying to make you uncomfortable. I'm looking at you, Serbian film. I have no desire to watch those ones, but I did end up watching some ones that were just intriguing to me, despite them being also disturbing. I watched The House That Jack Built, pretty good movie. A little rough uh, at the halfway point, viewer discretion is advised. I watched There's Something About Kevin. Ah, uh, we need to talk about Kevin? Not Megan, we need to talk about Kevin and there's something about Mary mixed up. Two very different movies. <laughs> Didn't like it. I don't know why everybody liked that. Not even about the disturbing element. I just found it very, it was okay. <laughs> I watched Hard Candy. That was a good movie. Again, not super disturbing, but I can see elements of it that would really make people uncomfortable. And there was a fourth one I watched. Oh, I Saw the Devil. I watched that for the second or third time. Um, that's a good ass movie, again. Of all of them, weirdly enough, I think that one's probably the most disturbing, even though The House That Jack Built is a close second. Anywho, I'm not even here to talk about those movies. The reason I bring it up, when people started recommending me this new film that just got released on Netflix, I didn't realize, nor did I plan to be even more disturbed watching this movie than I was watching like a serial killer. Today we're looking at the newly released Netflix distribution because I don't believe it's an original, much like our uh, deadly illusions from a few weeks ago. Today we're looking at the 2020 psychological thriller body horror sci-fi amalgamation known as What Lies Beneath. Girl, no, it's not. It's called What Lies Below. <laughs> This is why you get sleep. This film revolves around a 16 year old girl. The song is on cue, don't worry about it. Who comes home from archeology span camp and finds that her mom is dating a new, like weirdly hot younger man who just isn't quite what he seems, which I disagree. He was creepy as hell from the get go. This movie, probably more than any movie I've had on this series, takes a 180 like nothing else. The only movie that I can even think of that I've seen ever that kinda does this in a similar way is that one movie with Lakeith Stanfield in it, the one where he starts off as a telemarketer and ends up being like a dinosaur or something by the end of it. What was it called? Oh, sorry to bother you. That was a weird one. <laughs> I haven't, I only saw it once. I kind of want to see it again because I, I don't know what the hell was going on. Uh, I might need to watch that one again and bring that to the series because that was a cluster <laughs> if I've ever seen one. But as for What Lies Below, it is a film that I in no way could have mentally prepared for. Like for the first half of the movie, you think you know what you're watching and you're uncomfortable. But the second half happens and it's like, bam, lizard people. 
but alas, I'm getting ahead of myself. This movie is peak trash. Horrible, terrible, astoundingly bad. Please watch it. It is deeply disturbing. Again, comparatively to movies that are known to be disturbing, this one really got me actually in many parts. And that's also a warning. So if you, for instance, can't get through this video of me talking about it, I probably wouldn't recommend watching it. But if you can sit through me talking about it, it's a whirlwind. Now, now I'm conflicted because I'd prefer you actually don't finish my video. I'd prefer you watch it completely blind and then come back to this video. <laughs> Remember to return to my video. They've already made their money. They've made their shitty movie. I need to make mine. But <laughs> if you do that, come back to this video. Or if you've already seen the movie, have fun with me. This will be a great time, but I recommend that everyone sees this movie if you think that you can stomach it is where I'm gonna start off with this, okay? Somehow this movie, despite being terribly written, terribly shot, it's just ugly in a lot of places, just really ugly to look at. The CGI is pretty bad. Um, the acting's even worse. The writing's even worse than that. This movie, even more so than some of the movies that I was talking about earlier, made me feel greatly disturbed in a psychological way. Again, even more so than some of the quote unquote disturbing movies that I've seen earlier. I'm not saying that as a challenge. <laughs> Please don't send me more disturbing movies to watch. I've seen the entire playlist on Spooky Rice. I know which ones I wanna see and which ones I don't want to, I'll get to them. And truly at parts of this movie, I was more disturbed than I ever was with movies where a serial killer turns a titty into a wallet. You're gonna have to figure out which movie. <laughs> but something about all of these winding and mismatching parts of this film ultimately are able to create this cacophony of trash that is also greatly disturbing to me and my sensibilities. So in that way, I do consider it quite effective as a horror film. It makes my skin crawl. It makes my back straighten. It makes me itch a little bit. <laughs> Over the course of making this here video, I've seen it like three, five, three, three or four times at this point. And let me just say, each time it's equally as uncomfortable. But alas, the pain was worth it. Here's a video. And without further ado, this is What Lies Beneath. What Lies Below. Have I been saying What Lies Beneath this entire time? It's called What Lies Below. Because apparently that's a different movie. What Lies Below. <laughs> the film begins and we meet our main protagonist, 16 year old Liberty. <laughs> it's been a minute. <gasps> oh my God, I don't know why it took me. It's been a minute since I've been on stage. A broody had 25 years. <laughs> Brood <laughs> shit. Brooding a 25 year old teenager. I don't know why when I did that, I thought of the video. Deliver! Deliver! <laughs> but in all seriousness, I saw her and I was like, are you serious? Like y'all, y'all push it regularly. And you know, I understand the logistics around, you know, making full adults, your teenagers in film, you know, labor laws and all that. But I looked at her and I was like, that is a 30 year old woman. That's a 28 to 30 year old woman. Come to find out, I think she's 27. So I was pretty close, right? Why? You could have got like a 20 year old. And what they kind of do, I think more so than any other film that I've seen where you can tell like, whoever the actor is significantly older than the character they're playing, is that they they make her kind of do this, like th have this like insecure twitchy quality <laughs> that I know is supposed to be indicative of when you're like awkward and insecure as like a 16 year old, but it just looks so weird because she's obviously almost in her thirties. Anyway, long story short, she's 16. And at the beginning of the movie, she's coming home from archeology span camp, which is cool. I didn't even know they had that, but they got a camp for everything. So I shouldn't be surprised. Um, her mom is annoying as shit. And, and that's one of the things that are just her like core personality trait through the entire movie. She's just annoying, very childlike. Unfortunately, despite Liberty also being a idiot, as you'll see for the rest of this movie, she has an excuse. She's 16. What is your excuse? The entire time she gives this like, I'm not like a regular mom, I'm cool mom thing. And it's incredibly annoying. Cause it's like, do your job. <laughs> boys for girls, 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 we like boys, 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 boys. What if she a lesbian? <laughs> like, John not playing for that. If it's because of Tommy. It's not. Well, if it is. It's not. I'm just saying it wouldn't kill you to maybe dress a bit sexier. Yikes. 
Yes, all right. Now, I consider completely skipping this scene because it really is completely and utterly inconsequential, but I wanted to talk about it just to let you know that there's so much in this movie that's there as complete and utter filler, which lends to this whole thing I was talking about, about it just being like structurally a sh movie. And somehow, despite all of that, it was able to freak me out more than other like better made movies. So I get, hey. But yes, this scene is both weird and irrelevant. So there you go. Speaking of weird and irrelevant, Cool Mom uh, allows Liberty, who does not know how to drive, does not have a license to drive the car. And around this time, I realized that she was wearing pajama bottoms. Girl, you were at camp. You were with other people. Sound like my mom. You represent me. Like, what is this? This is what you wear to Walmart. Not like respectable public. So they drive away from camp back to this house. Presumably that's like a summer home that they go to. And it was Liberty's grandfather's house. And apparently they spend parts of their summer there every year. And this, this, This is where we meet the mom's new boyfriend, John. I know, I'm writing him constantly. Boundaries, ew. And in much in the same way I discussed in Afterburn, Aftershock, Aftershock, After, whatever. Uh, in that video, this man is on paper all the things that I, as a heterosexual woman, am supposed to find attractive according to like Western society and Western definitions of attractiveness for men. But to such an almost alien degree that it's unattractive to me. The fluorescent tan, the the like weirdly bright teeth. It could also admittedly be because I watch a lot of too much <laughs> true crime. <laughs> and there's just something about this guy that reads, he'd make me into jerky. You know what I mean? I don't know quite where it comes from. Granted, that might be more testament to good casting for him alone if for nothing else. Right, they put all that energy <laughs> into casting him that they said F all to whoever plays the rest of the sh Yeah, we'll get a 48 year old to play the 16 year old, it's fine. John introduces himself to Liberty, gives her a gift of a bracelet that he goes on this incredibly long and drawn out backstory and history around. He is a talker, man. He's a talker and a half. And I talk too much. So if I said shut the fuck up, you know, <laughs> she's like, shut the fuck up. Anyway, he gives her this bracelet and he's like, oh, it's super significant in like Navajo folklore and yada, 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 which begs the question, how did this random white man get it but he goes on and on and on and at some point i mentally check out and i always do when he's talking because again he'll just go on and on and on and on but i do make a note that he says that this bracelet is supposed to be good for fertility admittedly questionable to to point that out and you're giving it to a uh, 16 year old but the fertility thing is admittedly important for the for the progress of the story. Gross. So now all three of them will be staying in this one summer house. And immediately in a way that this movie is desperately trying to make me uncomfortable, it lets us know that Liberty is greatly attracted, at least on a physical level to John. Which again was incredibly effective at making me greatly uncomfortable. So congratulations movie, you did I guess what you were going for. You got me crawling in my skin. But I will say, as a person that <laughs> at this point is known for kind of pointing out less than um, great tropes in media, I would like to articulate that I personally have no problems with most tropes. I think I don't say this enough. I don't inherently have a problem with even this trope. My thing is all about delivery. Like we're here and we're talking about someone who's underage and who's talking to or is attracted to an adult, right? If we make this movie and let everybody know, hey, this is creepy, then I'm all for it. We're giving it the due that it deserves. The same way that I feel about like sexual assault. If we're like not undermining it, not turning it into a joke, giving it the serious tone that is important for the circumstance, then I'm all for it. And for that, I'm gonna applaud this movie because it does introduce a dynamic that greatly makes me uncomfortable, but it's also a horror movie. So like it's supposed to, but it also makes it horrifying because far too often, have y'all seen Pretty Little Liars? I haven't, I've seen clips. One of the biggest storylines was like one of the students in high school 
falling in love with her teacher who was like a whole ass adult. And nobody thought that was weird. Everybody thought it was like, wow, that's crazy. That's exciting. I'm like, pardon the f It's not just in that show. It's in so many where people are just like scandalous. It's like, it's not scandalous. It's, it's statutory rape. What the f so I say all that to say, one of the things that I greatly like about this movie, again, it's not great. It makes that element, it makes that dynamic horrifying. It got the real creepy ass music, the real tense string. Again, not a good movie, but at least in this regard, it made me as uncomfortable as I should be given the context. But again, is the movie good? No, but is it good? And making me viscerally uncomfortable? Oh, absolutely. For instance, this scene, what the f is he doing? Right? It makes you itch. So apparently John is a aquatic geneticist. I had to look my notes. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. I don't know anything about science. The genetics of water. John says in literally, again, the most lengthy and drawn out way possible that his job involves making it so that certain species can live in a saltwater world. He's doing research so that they can strive and reproduce in more favorable conditions for the aquatic animals and fish and whatnot. Now, instead of just saying that, he does a whole science project at the table that involves somebody else's water and stick his dirty ass fingers into it. And for some reason, this turns both Liberty and the mom on. That's a horrible sentence. Then we have another scene that, again, I almost consider it not even showing because what's the point? But this chokes on a piece of spinach like a f***ing bitch. And it's a long scene. Again, so long that you start to think it's significant, but it never comes up ever again. But he survives with no help from them. They just watch him choke. Don't play dumb. You knew this is where we're going. I said I was uncomfortable and that the daughter was attracted to the older guy. You knew where we're going. You won't see where we end up, but you knew where we were going. <laughs> and this interaction stays with Libby to such an extent that she almost touches herself at night, but then on better judgment doesn't do so. Instead, she gets up to get a can of pop. I'm from Michigan. It is a can of pop. But on the way back, <laughs> On the way back, she hears her mom and John doing the horizontal tango. Oh my God, they loud as hell. They act like there's no kids in the house. First of all, let's start there, but two. But during it, she's like yelling out, doing the, the ancient siren song or whatever. But the way that she sounds, uh, you wouldn't be remiss for thinking she may also be getting murdered. Like it makes you concerned. Or like, are you okay? Is he theoretically <laughs> rearranging your guts? Consensually <laughs> rearranging your guts? Or like, what's going on? And hence why when Libby goes up to the door to like look under the door, I can't completely call her a creeper because I'd be concerned too. Like what the hell is going on? But before she can see anything, she hears noises and someone approaching the door and she runs off in a panic and goes back to her room and pretends to be asleep. Now, remember when I said that this movie was uh, again, light years ahead of some other movies that making me feel uncomfortable? This scene, <laughs> woo, okay so then. <laughs> John gets up to get a glass of water or something and we see him outside of Libby's room in like shadow, but you can tell that he butt ass, stark ass, booty ass naked. And if that's not creepy enough, which is it's creepy plenty on its own, he gets to the door and just stands there for just a disturbingly long amount of time and eventually closed the door. But let me tell you that again, was one of the most effectively uncomfortable scenes I've seen in like a horror psychological movie in, you know, a while. They recognize that to really make something uncomfortable, you let, you gotta let us sit in it. You can't just suggest like, oh, maybe he's outside. It's like, yes, he's outside. Now let's sit here for like, 20 uninterrupted seconds. There's a bunch of just like little like incidents is, is the best way I can describe it throughout the movie that are supposed to be indicative of John being a weirdo. Um, there's a scene where Libby is out and she gets bitten by a bug and he's like, oh, it's venomous. So let me help you. And he just blows on it. And that, you know, stops death. <laughs> But during this weird exchange, he's like, I don't wanna come between you and your mom. You know, she's very important to me. I love her. 
yada 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 and i'll leave if that's what's necessary because again i don't want to get between you and your mom libby's like no if you love her or whatever you should stay so around this time the mom starts to feel sick and everyone thinks oh maybe it's just like some food poisoning you know get some rest you know she separates herself from the rest of the, the house essentially. We find out around this time that John has actually proposed to the mom and she tells Libby and she's like, oh, I love him so much. I care about him so much. I don't wanna lose him. He's just everything to me. Apparently one of the things that the mom has been doing has been lying to him, uh, saying that she's 35 when in actuality, she is 42 and she's like, Libby, don't tell him that I'm actually not 35, which I feel like uh, we're just ignoring that if you were a married couple, you'd have like documents and stuff to sign that your real age would have to be on at some point. At some point he would, he would learn that something is off, but okay. More Libby looking at John. And again, effectively making me uncomfortable. But this time, <laughs> Not because of the inappropriate gandering amongst like a minor and, and an adult. Uh, now it's because... So now we can accept that all as a congregation that that dude is a freaking weirdo. Like we knew that anyway, we could tell that anyway, but now as a congregation, we can just accept Oh, that got on some weird So for some reason, that doesn't make her completely never wanna talk to him again, which I find mind boggling. Quite the opposite. Instead, she goes to get another pop to go give him. And, uh, I can't do this sodium. It's a bad ticker. Which I didn't know that pop had a bunch of uh, sodium in it. So I learned something new today. While downstairs, he shows her his aquatic setup that he just set up all up in the basement. The nerve. Anyway, he goes on another like three minute long dissertation about how whatever organism he has in the basement is adapting to feast on new prey in an effort to adapt to salt water. Again, one ear out the other, but the dude just goes on and on and on. Just say what, I, anyway. At the end of which Libby remarks, you're kind of a, a weird dude. Which I find hilarious because you just saw him drink his own sweat. <laughs> I don't think this is the moment we needed to show that this dude is a little not normal. But alas, she just takes it as like somewhat quirky. Again, she's supposed to be 16, so okay, fair enough. But despite him being weird, I guess not weird enough to not go with him in like a little canoe to get samples from the lake. And this... Okay, this and the scene with him just like well there's actually no they do they, they're, they're pretty effective a few times with making me greatly uncomfortable but i feel like this is the one that'll disturb most people um while there he takes a shirt off for some reason to get his specimens from the lake all of a sudden in the middle of them talking about like the colleges she wants to go to she starts to bleed as in her period and she starts bleeding, bleeding like hard. I start to wonder, is she okay? Like you want some eloquence, you want a blood thinner? And then uh, <laughs> I'm laughing from discomfort. John reflexively um, goes to stop it with his coat or something. And then one of his specimens is like trying to get the blood. So I guess to save it, save her from having it <laughs> latch on her pussy. I told y'all I had an irrational fear. Like I'm afraid of having like a stingray zap me in the pussy. Apparently the prospects are closer than I than I realized. And obviously for obvious reasons, this is incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly weird, and it's very awkward. And it would have been bad enough if we just kept it there. We could maybe even argue like, oh, accidental. In an effort to quell her discomfort. This is totally normal. Look, it's, it's no big deal. I deserve severance. I don't get paid enough for this shit. But I get paid something, so let me just <laughs> excommunicate myself from the rest of this film. But alas, I've come this far, so I kinda gotta know where it goes. So finally, at this point, she's effectively uncomfortable. Again, 
He was drinking his own sweat, being just weird in general. But now he's like literally fondled you. So now what? Almost immediately after that, we have nearly an equally uncomfortable scene where she goes to take a shower after this experience. <laughs> It's not funny, but sniffs the general area around her body as she's in the shower, smells her clothes. And again, this scene is so fucking long. And again, I in begrudgingly, I have to applaud it for effectively making my skin crawl. It is a talent. So finally, after all of those encounters, he's drunk his own sweat. I keep coming back to that. Licked her period and other just general oddities about him. Only now does she say, hey, uh, let me tell somebody about him. And so for some reason her phone's not working or something, so she ends up messaging her friend via messenger on her computer. She, she tells her, she's like, hey, 911, help, emergency. And her friend is like, I can't make it today. <laughs> Your friend sends you 911 emergency and you don't think like, hey, let me get the, police involved but she's like no oh my god is it really an emergency I'll, I'll drop by tomorrow so in the meantime Libby has to take care of her mom whose health is progressively getting worse and that's because apparently because again we didn't see this coming she may be pregnant she tells Libby to go back into town with her non-driver's license having ass to go get a pregnancy test and some other medicine for her morning sickness or presumed morning sickness and so Libby does just that but while she's in town she ends up seeing a man who looks suspiciously like John with another woman does she tell her mom about this? Does she let her mom know that she thinks that her, the boyfriend that she finds very weird who touched her inappropriately and again, drunk his own sweat was also possibly cheating on her? No, she, she just goes back and she's like, here's a medicine. When she gets back, she sees that her friend who is racially ambiguous, but certainly not white, so I know that she wasn't gonna live to the end. Uh, and she's also incredibly annoying. I think her name is like Millie, Molly, Maybe Mar Marley, Marley, Marley. I think her name's Marley. Doesn't matter. She tells her friend that he had touched her and she doesn't know what to do. And so Marley's like, oh, I'm gonna talk to your mom. And she goes to go talk to her completely by herself. Y'all just be walking into people's houses and, and confronting their parents by yourself. Okay. But she goes up to talk to her and is never seen again. Not alive at least. Libby eats some potato salad or pasta salad or something that they didn't put a top on. Ugh. And apparently it was drugged or something and it ended up knocking her out for hours at a time. And when she awakes, she sees her mom and John next to each other cuddled up and they officially announced to her that, that the mom is indeed pregnant. And after hearing this, Libby finally confronts her mom and lets her know. And she's like, you can't marry him. He's weird. And she's like, what do you mean? And then they get in an argument. Cause she's like, he licked my, he licked my, he licked my, he licked my period blood. And she's like, what are you talking about? They get in a tussle, a slap rings out in the night. And then uh, Libby lets uh, lizard boy know that Apparently, the mom is not 35, she's 42. So if you want any more kids, you're f This bothers John more than one would suppose it would. John! Let go. And even after the incredibly sinister soundtrack comes in, Libby's mom still doesn't believe that there's anything wrong with him. More incredibly uh, alarming sounding sex. But this time Libby decides to take the the chance to go see what the hell is going on. And, <laughs> and while she's there, she sees her mama getting dicked down by a gargoyle. Now, Odu got scales and she doesn't know, she doesn't feel them like under her hands. She just think it's eczema, <laughs> little psoriasis, bitch. Don't worry about it. Ain't nothing some Vaseline can't fix. And again, what does Libby do? She runs away. She runs away, calls no authority figures, not even like pest control, animal control. She don't even Google, like what does it take to get rid of large reptiles from your backyard? Nothing. She just says, oh, in trouble we are. But eventually she does run back into the bedroom to see that her parents, well, her mom and her step, John, uh, are not there anymore. And so she goes off looking for them. She goes off into the woods in the dark, again, calling no authority figures. Like I said, though I've talked a lot about how the mom is fucking stupid, fret not, cause that apple and that tree are never too far away from each other or however the saying goes. Uh, because Libby, 
Two is a fucking idiot. She goes into the water for some reason, goes to get the car. She gets in the car. She does not drive to civilization to get help or again, call any authority figures. She instead gets out of the car that's still in active drive. And lo and behold, what do cars do when you don't put them in park? And after all of this culmination of dumb bitch antics, they play the super dramatic music that signifies that whatever I'm seeing right now on screen is significant. To this day, I still don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. I don't know, I'm, I don't have the best eyesight. So admittedly, it could be right before me and I have no idea what I'm supposed to get from this particular shot. But, but whatever it was that I was supposed to be seeing was important enough for her to go running back to the house. At which she calls uh, the racially ambiguous non-white friend, which means that she's had literally no reason why she couldn't call for authorities this entire time. Again, pest control, animal control. Just let somebody, just say like your stepdad is violent. Nothing, she does nothing. And so despite having a working phone, she instead calls that friend who does not answer. And then she calls her mom's phone whose uh, ringer is going off down in the basement. So she follows down to the little like makeshift laboratory that he's made in their basement. I just thought about that. Why would her phone <laughs> stop Kendall? You're going to literally ruin every movie. If you keep doing it. it's bad, bad. Why was her phone in the basement anyway? But she's strapped up on with like IVs on both arms as she's sitting in a pool awaiting her labor. She's about to give birth apparently. And in, in no way does she show pregnant like in the abdomen or anything, but they say, yeah, she's, she's pregnant. Uh, or about to give birth. So here comes Libby. She's like, I'm again, mom. And then the mom wakes up because she was unconscious. She wakes up and this bitch starts screaming. Like, bitch, shut up. You always think somebody else is gonna be the dumbest bitch in this movie, but the mom always sweeps in. But apparently it's labor pains she's about to have. The lizard demon baby. And she's like, let me get out. And here comes from the upstairs comes John. In a panic, Libby had knocked over some salt into the water on the floor. He comes downstairs in his lizard Muppet feet and steps in some salt water, which apparently is corrosive or harmful in some way to him and put some boots on. And she's starting to give birth and apparently she gives birth and it doesn't go very well, possibly due to her age, right? She's just writhing and he's like, oh no. Oh no! Goes outside for some reason. I don't know. And then throws up like a like a like a nuclear glow in the dark teal goo into the baby. <laughs> Apparently, upon seeing the demon sci-fi goo, is when she's really like, "Oh shit! I should call. I should call somebody. I should ask for help." And she's like, "Carry up, my stepdad is trying to kill us." And while she's sitting there calling, she ends up seeing the the friend that is non-white and very disposable, dead, floating in like some water as some eels feast on her body. Cause yeah, we didn't see that coming. So uh, yeah, she's calling the police and here he comes. <laughs> Lizard feet and human body. <laughs> and I don't know why that <laughs> With me. That shit was funny. She throws like salt on him and that knocks him out for a minute, long enough for her to get her mom. And they start to run for safety, but her mom collapses in front of the house. That was enough of a hesitation. So presumably after this, we don't see the mom anymore. So I guess she's dead, which is, oh my God, blue balls. The amount of time I wanted to see her die, you're telling me her death is off screen. Anyway, John has her tied up. This movie really does make me think even as a sober person that I'm completely and utterly tweaking because then there's like six Johns or something comes into frame, bursting open the, the walls of the basement. And there's like women, all of which have like red hair for some reason, floating in water in these like crystalline chambers. Then she's forced to swallow the green goo and in the next scene, we see her in one of those crystalline chambers as the water comes in and she silently is overtaken by it. And uh, that's, the end of, <laughs> that's the end of the movie. I know, I know, I know, I know. What the f was that? I know. 
fucking red herring of a movie, right? You really thought you were getting into like an uncomfortable minor adult relationship, which would have been bad enough, but no, it turns into a whole like Jurassic Park. Quite the alley up switch Rue. I did not see that coming. So I gotta applaud it for that again. A roller coaster. Uh, a winding road that led to nowhere. And with so many unanswered questions, to such an extent that it's just negligent, my core question was like, why did John need to do any of this? <laughs> like, if he's just trying to like orchestrate a new being in the world, uh, not to be dark, but he doesn't have to go through the whole leaps and bounds to like court a woman and her child and, and like get to know them and build bond and stuff. He, he's a monster. I'm just saying he doesn't have to schmooze and get engaged and do all this bullshit completely unnecessary two y'all not gonna explain the glowing baby goo what were the water pods what, what what is that they mentioned the importance of red hair here and there and i've completely skipped over it because they never explained why it's important like at the end you see like other women in this predicament and they all had red hair but i don't know why that that matters <laughs> What do eel things have to do with lizard people? Why did the police never get there? Quick enough to find that he had cleaned out the whole basement and keeping women behind panel boards like Wayne Gacy. There's so many questions that nobody felt the need to answer. The sheer visceral discomfort that I felt while watching it pretty much the entire way through is enough to make me want to inflict it on the masses. And hey, it's a perk of the job, what can I say? I do recommend it for at least a singular watch. Again, not much more than that. Don't look away for a second though. You'll be so confused. You'll be confused if you watch it all the way through, but I actually saw more things. I didn't, I missed the sweat thing the first time. That was so quick. It was like, oops. And I was like, Ugh. but yeah, that's all for today, folks. If you've seen it, by the way, if you've seen it, please leave your reviews down in the comment section. I would love to read them. If you have an ending explained, probably. I didn't want to watch one before I did this video for obvious reasons, because I don't want like a lot of other people's insight on it. Also, if you have other bad movies that you think I should check out, put those also down in the comment section. Subscribe, notifications, follow me on all my social media, all of which are Kenny JD, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.